Cove. It's nestled between two harbors, a small city over there, um, and Blue Cavern Point, which is all of this right over here. It's beautiful here. I've been on the island for about two and a half months, and I will be leaving in about three weeks. I'm gonna miss it. Yeah, but the cool thing is that like it... So I'm this year's photo intern for USC Wrigley here on Catalina Island. And now that I'm nearing the end of my experience, I'm looking back on all the memories I've made, the people I've met, and the amazing things I've learned. It's really a lot. And to be honest, there's only one thing I wish I knew a little bit more about before I came out here, and that's more about the cove itself. It's hard to have any sort of expectation if you haven't been out to Catalina Island before. I had seen some pictures, but I really didn't know what I was in for, especially underwater. I keep thinking about how nice it would have been for someone to have shown me around a little bit. So here's my own comprehensive guide of Big Fisherman's Cove and the MPA surrounding it, so you can get an even quicker start on discovering its beauty for yourself. In California alone, there's a total of 124 marine protected areas that span from the Oregon border all the way down to the border of Mexico. Due to the sheer size and spread of these areas, a group called the Marine Protected Area Collaborative was founded, specifically by a network of local experts, scientists, and community members to support the management and protection of these MPAs. Today, I got the chance to speak with one of the group's members, Lauren Odin, who is also an expert on the area here in Big Fisherman's Cove. I came out to the facility to finish up some graduate coursework, um, and I was not from California, let alone Southern California, and I had never seen kelp before. And so for me, um, even though I was an experienced diver and I dove in other parts of the world, uh, there's kind of nothing like kelp. It was very three-dimensional. I enjoyed diving with that. So it's also a little more challenging, um, but it was, it was really exciting to kind of just um, coming here, not being from here, probably getting in the water like day two. Um, and just being surrounded by this giant kelp, I mean, they call it that for a reason, in this forest, which you've, I'd studied kelp forests, but just being in it and feeling in it, um, that definitely had a lasting impression on me and made an impact. Lauren tells me that our MPA in Big Fisherman's Cove is split into two parts, an onshore and an offshore component. Its southwestern boundary starts over by chalk cliffs and makes its way past Bird Rock, extending three nautical square miles out into the ocean. The boundary continues around our campus, past Blue Cavern, down to Yellowtail Point before you reach the houses at Empire Cove. And that is what pretty much makes up the boundaries of this MPA. Right after Bird Rock is a split in designation between the onshore and offshore portion of the MPA. These are split due to the differences in regulations and protections. For example, the onshore is a no-take zone, versus the offshore, which allows for limited take of select pelagic species like swordfish. This is a clip of me freediving in the onshore component. What you'll notice here are usually rock walls, shallower depths, and thick kelp forests. For comparison, this is what it looks like in the offshore designation. For a recreational swimmer, the main noticeable differences will be the depth and the concentration of marine species. After talking with Lauren, I figured it was only right to have a similar conversation with other knowledgeable people here on the island. Plus, I had a question I needed answered. Kind of freaky, right? Sometime between May Mester and July Mester, the water became super murky. And in my three months here, I've been able to witness the underwater environment in a bunch of different conditions. Calm days with great visibility, and extremely windy ones where the water seemed pretty foggy. Still, nothing seemed to compare to this though. What really was all this stuff in the water? I talked with Victoria Sparrow, the island's research coordinator and also an adept scientific diver with many years of experience. She seemed to have a pretty good answer. Luckily, this one is harmless. So harmful algal blooms, we don't actually typically get them a lot out here on the island. Um, a lot of it comes from the mainland and the reason why is nutrient runoff from farmland from you know people's lawns 
come into storm drains and kind of through that fresh water runoff watershed, as those super high nutrient waters get flushed into the ocean, um, the algae around it, they'll basically multiply into crazy numbers. Some of these phytoplankton produce toxins, which can be lethal to different animals, can make them act kind of crazy. The good thing is that this isn't exactly what's occurring here on the island. My point in showing you this is so that you can understand that this isn't something to be scared about. In fact, you don't have to be scared about anything really. The great thing about being here on the island with all these experts is that you can get your questions answered. It's really a place to learn, and I say that with all honesty. Lastly, it wouldn't be such a beautiful place if it wasn't properly taken care of. I wanted to leave you with some knowledge on how to help protect the MPA. I asked Megan McGregor this question, the education coordinator here on the island. This is what she had to say. I would say the biggest thing they could help with is to just educate others. A lot of people just don't really know about MPAs or their benefits, and so we get a lot of like illegal fishing, you know, not intentional, but people just don't really know. Uh, so that's a lot of like what the MPA Collaborative does here on the island, is we just educate as much as we can. And so anyone coming here can just, you know, like tell their friends, tell their family, um, educate the people around them. It's time for me to head back before before it gets too dark. I made a mistake one night of. Uh... So now that you know what you know from this video, spread the word, talk about it, and enjoy your time out in Catalina if you're planning a trip to Big Fisherman's Cove. I hope this guide allowed you to dip into my perspective of the MPA and told you everything I didn't know before making my way out here. Special thanks to my mentors, Catherine Royster and Jessica Dutton, for making this all possible, and my supervisors at the comms team. Nick and Vanessa for helping me out.